<clears throat> Good evening. My name is Deandra Stansel, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church. The school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio, <clears throat> excuse me, in the year of 1931. The dean of the Chicago Northside Zoom class is Dr. John Quaite, and the president is Dr. Patrick Lotortu. In this school, we, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are still contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh and has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. <laughs> Excuse me. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name title. I mean, also, Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name. But, but but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in the good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of the Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this day, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, source, and limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. And like matter, everything abounds within a pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, that knowing that mankind cannot perceive of him in this pure st spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as he knew. This is the word or son. A super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit, manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given until salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, at the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses up top Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern and a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The objectives and aims of the Chicago Northside Zoom class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity, and Yahshua the Messiah, without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in men. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern and practical and occult science. Sixth is to 
Excapate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known to Yahweh from the beginning, ordained there is no other name given among men, where that men can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. And our slogan is to speak the truth. Now, today's class will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. Lisa Cook. And our scripture lesson for this evening will be Revelations, the 22nd chapter, which will be read by Dr. Reba Riley. May we now have our prayer. Good evening, class. Could we all bow our hearts and minds? Dear Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through your son, Yahshua the Messiah, we come humbly before you and ask that you continue to lead, guide, and direct us. We ask that you help us to hear your voice from heaven and to obey. We ask that you continue to protect us um, and allow us to continue to hear your voice. These things we ask in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hello? Okay, there you are. Oh, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I will be re reading Revelations, the 22nd chapter. And he showed me, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no sight I mean, there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for for Yahweh, for Yahweh, Elohim, giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true, and Yahweh, Elohim of the holy prophets, sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See, thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship Elohim. And he said unto me, seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his, as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adulterers and whosoever love it and make it a lie, I, I, Yahshua, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star and the spirit and the bride say, come 
and let him that hear say come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, Elohim shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, or Elohim shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testified these things said, surely I come quickly. Amen. Um, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Yahweh, Yahshua, the grace of our Yahweh, Yahshua, Christ be with you all. Amen. Revelation chapter 22. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you. Doc. Thank you, Dr. Cook and Dr. Rowley. And okay. just a few announcements before we get started. May we now take the time to mute our all of our um, microphones, um, laptops, TVs, or any other electrical devices that may cause disturbance. May we now take the time to stop our video feed so we won't interrupt anyone or have any mistakes. And tonight will be a two speaker format. Each speaker will have between approximately, give or take a minute, minutes, uh, 50 and 55 minutes. When your lecture is coming to an end, we will put up a five minute sign. If you can please acknowledge that sign and wrap up your lecture. And if we have any volunteers to scripture read this evening, if you're led to, do, if you're moved to do so, if you please help out. I don't see any visiting brothering. So without further ado, our first speaker for this evening will be a pleasure to call on Dr. Kenyatta Jackson. Dr. Jackson. You're muted again. Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, uh, I just wanna say, um, I'm happy to be here to know anything about Yahweh Elohim. And I'm thankful that he gave me an opportunity to know him. And um, right now, I don't have much on my heart and mind. I'm just grateful and thankful to know Yahweh and Yahshua the Messiah. And uh, with that, I'm going to just yield the floor tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. And for our next speaker this evening, it will be a pleasure to call on Dr. Lisa Cook. Okay, um, good evening. Um, good evening. I'm happy to be here and uh, I would like to give all praise to Yahshua. And um, if Yahweh will, I'll just lay a foundation for the next speaker and perhaps share a few things. I enjoyed this scripture lesson um, very much. Can we get um, Revel Revelations 22, I think. Let's start it. Oh, let's see. Sorry. Maybe at eight or a little bit above eight. There's something in there that I caught, but I didn't write it down. Revelation. Revelation 22 and 8. And I, John, saw these things and, and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down. I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Continue. Then, then saith he unto me, see thou, see thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of the brethren, the prophets and of them, which the prophets, and I'm sorry, and of, the, uh, and of thy brethren, the prophets and of them, which kept the sayings of this book, worship Yahweh. Okay, that's good. So I just thought that was pretty. Um about how 
uh, this angel told John not to worship him. See, a true minister, and, and angels are ministering spirits, um, is not going to seek the glory, you know, of the things that are being revealed. Uh, it's, I'll just say it, you know, it's, you won't take credit, an angel or any other uh, representative, let me call it, of Yahshua the Messiah, the anyone coming in the name of Yahshua, is not going to take credit for the things that Yahweh has revealed through his son, okay? And um, and so it's so pretty because you got kind of two things going on here in that John was allowed to see things, right, and hear things, and when he heard them and saw them, he wanted to worship the person, well, the angel that shared these things with him, okay? And, and, and that angel said, don't do that, see, because he's a fellow servant. We're all servants here of Yahshua the Messiah. Um, and the attitude and disposition of a servant of Yahshua Messiah is not to be seeking the glory, see, or... Um, of the things that are being revealed. We know that these things are not of ourselves, uh, but they're revealed through his son, uh, according to his mercy. Um, and so let's start off with Romans 1, 19 and 20, uh, because uh, I, I say this often and, 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 and we all do here in the school, these are foundational scriptures and it takes the natural to understand the spirit. So um, let's start there. Romans 1, 19 and 20, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh have showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and, hope and, and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. So we have no excuse for not under, for not knowing our heavenly Father Yahweh, uh, who is spirit, and even though we as finite creatures see down here in this earth plane, uh, as far as our physical senses are concerned, uh, can't see with our physical eye spirit, hear with our physical ear spirit, see, but it's it's revealed unto us by His Son, and the way we start to learn to have some confidence in. Uh, in that process is by um, a pattern and it's through Yahshua the Messiah. And so we look at the things that are made um, because everything, everything down here, when I say down here, I'm talking about in this earth plane, see, everything is a Romans 1, 19 and 20. Okay. There's something that we can understand about uh, the creator or his, or his purpose, see, by looking at the things that are made. Okay. so. Let's start with, um, I'll, I'll quote a few, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. It states in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is Yahweh unity. Uh, it says in 1 John 5 and 7 that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. So when we look at uh, Yahweh pure spirit, um, we can understand that he is threefold yet one by looking at the things that are made. Now, in order for us to understand something about our creator, he uh, came down or into a lesser state and condition and um, into a shape and form, anthropomorphic being likened unto a man known as Yahweh Elohim. And it's in that state condition that he's, re he's revealed to the various patriarchs and prophets down through the ages and dispensations. And if we're going to learn anything about our invisible creator, it's going to have to be revealed through his son, this word or son. So that word appeared unto Moses, that word appeared unto John on the Isle of Patmos, that word or son appeared unto uh, our founder, Dr. Henry C Clifford Kinley. And those are the that's the way that we're going to learn something about our creator. And he's going to use things that we can comprehend so that we can start to see spiritual principles in operation. And that's why we uh, examine this migration of the children of Israel, because it's a physical or geographical uh, journey that these individuals took. Uh, but what it's really doing is pointing to something spiritual. Um, we can also look at 
uh, Yahshua the Messiah, and then we can see how when he was in his ministry, he said that the things that are written in the law and the prophets, the first five books of the Bible and the remaining 34 books of the Bible, that they all testify of him. In John 5, 39, he says, search the scriptures, but in, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. And in Luke, I want to get this, where he talked about... Um, then opened he their understanding, is that 44 and 45? But you could start at like 25 and come down. I, I think I'd like to have that read because it talks about the mission of Yahshua Messiah and, and that even the scriptures had to be opened up, see, to the people who he had been preaching to that whole time, his disciples, okay? It has to be revealed. Okay, so if we can get uh, Luke 24, 25 through 27 and then drop down to 44 and 45, I believe. Luke 24, 25 through 27. Then said unto them, then he said unto them, I'm sorry, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Mm -hmm. Dropping down to 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay, so that's, that's important, that opening up of an understanding. And, you know, the, the challenge sometimes is, you know, we might have, a, you know, we might think, oh, you know, I, I graduated from high school, I can, I can read, I can, you know, um, you know, you've got certain skill sets down here, which are a type and a shadow, <laughs> uh, really, in reality, we've got certain skills down here, or certain gifts down here that we're given. But to understand the things that be of Yahweh, that has to be revealed by his spirit. You're, we're just not going to wrestle these secrets from him, and he's going to have to open our understanding on it. So when we look at the Messiah and in his ministry, he talked about these things testify of him. We can go back to Moses because we're admonished by Isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light or illumination in them. So we want to go back to Moses and see how the scriptures testify of Yahshua Messiah. So we can look at the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. Um, and we can see that they had to take out an innocent lamb and slay or kill that lamb. When we look at Yahshua Messiah, we can see how John the Baptist referred to Yahshua as um, the lamb um, that taketh away the sin of the world. I can't remember if it was the cloud that said that or John the Baptist, but in either case, during this baptism, it, he's revealed as the, uh, as the lamb. Now, you've got a physical four-legged lamb that didn't do anything, but had to be sacrificed so that the children of Israel could escape the bondage uh, that they were under through Pharaoh. Well, Yahshua Messiah, he died um, with four points of blood on him, just like the blood from the lamb had to be poured out in a basin. And then you had the blood at the top of the doorpost and the two side posts, making a four point configuration of blood. And we'd see Yahshua Messiah has the four point configuration of blood. That lamb had to be pierced in the side, just like Yahshua Messiah had to be pierced in the side. So we look at these things and we can start to see, oh, they are they which testify of Yahshua the Messiah. It's a physical lamb, but it was pointing to something spiritual. Yahshua Messiah, he came into his ministry, ministry and he said he came in to fulfill the things that were written in the law and the prophets. And we learn by coming into the school that fulfill means to perform, to do, to bring to an end, or to translate into reality. So we can see him in his, in his fulfillment, and then we can see it in the spiritual fulfillment or the reality of the thing. 
Okay, so in the school, what we'll do is we show how Yash Messiah fulfilled and what that's supposed to do, and that's what's intended to do, is to help us establish our faith in the operation of spirit or the operation of the father in his purpose, carrying out his purpose according to a pattern. It says at the top of this chart that Elohim is the archetype, which means original pattern of the universe. So we've got our principle of a death, right, with this lamb, and we've got, our, again, our blood principle there. And then with the children of Israel, they had to eat this lamb, right? They had to eat all of it. They couldn't leave any of it. And if they, it was too much for that household, they had to share it, okay? So Yash Messiah in his ministry he said, I am that bread that came down from heaven, that I am, well, let me, let me, I'm sorry, I'm skipping some things here. But when Yahshua Messiah, he actually, he kept the Passover with his disciples, let's say it that way, okay? And it says, therefore, let us keep the feet, not with um, old leaven, I'm going to mess up that, could you find that for me, um, whoever scripture reading, and just let me know when you have it. So, Yahshua Messiah, he says, you know, he says, if, if you will have no life in me, in you, if you don't eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. But you see, the people interpreted the things that he said with a natural mind or a carnal mind and not understanding that he was talking about spiritual things. But we have to look at our natural types and shadows to understand that. So we've got our lamb and we had a meal, right? The meal that was prepared back here in Egypt was unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and roasted lamb. And he had to fulfill that by actually having this meal. This is called the Passover, the, pass, the Passover meal or the memorial. The Yash Messiah had to fulfill that by keeping this Passover with his disciples. And it's co considered to be the last supper, not the everlasting supper. So you can see how he fulfilled those things, but then what is the reality of what those things meant? Okay, so I don't know if you have it yet. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7 and 8. Okay. It says, purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even the Messiah, our Passover, is sacrificed for you. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Right. Thank you. So... We, we're looking at a physical lamb. We're looking at a physical meal. We're seeing that Yahshua Messiah, he actually fulfilled those things. We're seeing how the physical lamb pointed to him being the lamb. Why, why does it point to him being the lamb? Because a lamb, from a natural standpoint, is meek and humble. They also had to examine this lamb very carefully to make sure there were no spots and blemish, blemishes. Well, that points to Yahshua Messiah because he humbly... Um, was sacrificed on this cross, see? Uh, and he died so that we who believe in Yahshua Messiah can live. Um, and that sacrifice was an important uh, part of his ministry. And it's an important part of the purpose of Yahweh because it, 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 it was a line of demarcation, if I could say it that way, which between the way Yahweh wanted to be worshiped at one time and how he wants to be worshiped See, down here in this present kingdom age. Can we get the ages and dispensations chart? Okay. So when we get that chart up, we'll see that we're in the fourth age in a series of seven ages that end with the completion of Yahweh. Now, the ages that are in time are only three. The second age, the third age, and the fourth age. Those are the ages that are in time. Now, when Yash Messiah entered into his ministry, he was in this third age. And at this time is when the children of Israel were given a law. So after they had that sacrifice with the uh, Passover, with that meal, establishing that memorial, they went through the divided waters of the Red Sea. That's a water principle or a burial principle. Uh, they followed a cloud. That's a spirit principle. And they entered into the wilderness of Sinai. And uh, there they had to wash up. And Yahweh spoke down 
the law contained in ordinances. They were told how Yahweh wanted to be worshipped at that time from a natural standpoint. There were physical things they needed to do. They had to, they had to um, take out a lamp. There were physical things they could and could not eat. There were things that they could and could not wear. You know, it, it was very, it was a natural law and it was really intended to make law, I'm sorry, sin more exceedingly sinful. And so Yash Messiah, he comes in at the end of this age, this third age in time, this third age, excuse me, the second age in time, uh, in time, yes. And he came in to fulfill the things that were established under this old covenant with the Jews. Okay, now let's get the carnal ordinances chart. Because I just want to show forth how uh, Passover is one example there were meals um, that needed to be eaten, things that needed to be done. But under the, um, with Yahshua Messiah, he came in to fulfill those things. So we had a natural law on the left side and we have a spiritual law on the right side, okay? Now, uh, amongst the different carnal ordinances, you'll see these Passovers and you'll see how they had to keep that continually. And we go that, through that all the time. And we talked about, what was that, um, John 738 was that, I'm sorry, whichever scripture um, Dr. Quaich just read about purge out there for the 11. Um, you, so we get Exodus, the 12th chapter, and we see that that's when the memorial was set up. And then we can also uh, see that there was Passovers kept, I believe it's in Ezekiel. You don't have to get it, but I'm just trying to show that these things are in the scriptures and that Yahshua Messiah is fulfilling them, okay? Now, what ends up happening is, People don't believe on Yahshua Messiah and on his mission. And what they want to do is they want to continue to do these things from a natural standpoint, thinking that somehow they can work upon their salvation. But Yahshua Messiah said um, that um, they are there to testify of me. And his disciples say that you are saved by grace through faith not of yourselves, it's the gift, it's an unmerited gift of Yahweh. But we wanna, you know, uh, as natural or carnal people, we wanna continue, so we just you know, it can't be that simple. I've got to work on my salvation, I've got to go and give to the poor, I have to go and do these things for salvation's sake. And we're not saying that you shouldn't um, help people um, or, or be a kind um, and caring individual. But what we are saying is that for salvation, those things are not going to be enough. You know, there was a, a man who came to Yashua Messiah who said, you know, I, I've done all these things from my youth up. What more do I need to do? You know, because he wanted to know what he needs to do to be saved. And, he's, and Yashua told him, you know, give up everything that you have. Well, he had great riches, the scriptures talk about. And, you know, he went away, you know, fairly sorrowful. He didn't want to give these things up. See, we're going to have to understand that these natural things are just a type and a shadow to help lead us to the spiritual things. And we're going to have to put away uh, the things that um, were the building blocks to get us to understand and believe in Yahshua the Messiah and his mission. I'm sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, but uh, this is important because we're not going to study upon these things. And this is, comes to mind because I was in Orlando yesterday and it was a scripture that came up that kind of got me thinking. So I want to get that as well. First Corinthians 1 and 17, uh, I think it was. He's talking about how uh, he, Paul, was saying how he, he came to preach the gospel. And um, hold it for a minute because that, that's what we're doing when we're going through these various types and shadows. We want to preach how Yash Messiah came in and fulfilled the scriptures. We want to talk about how his mission was to die, bury, resurrect, and ascend, and outpour the Holy Spirit. His mission was to make uh, those that believe in him one with their creator as he and his father are one. We want to get back to that state and condition, and it's not going to be done through physical things. These things were given to the Jews and the Jews only, and it was given for the time then present. And as Paul says, I believe in Hebrews, it did not make them perfect as pertaining to their conscience. They can continue to offer up uh, sacrifices. They can continue to uh, baptize. Uh, they could continue to circumcise their uh, 
uh, children on the eighth day. They continue to have all these ceremonies, but none of those things were going to make them perfect as pertaining to their conscience. And it's the conscience or the soul that needs to be cleansed. And, uh, or, and it's the conscience or the soul that needs to eat. Uh, and it needs to, and these things are done through Yahshua the Messiah. So let's get 1 Corinthians 1.17, and hopefully I can share some of these things. 1 Corinthians. Okay, I got it. For the Messiah sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of the Messiah should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of Yahweh. Okay, you could hold it there. So it's talked about how the gospel was not, he didn't come preaching with, you know, you know, another way he says that he says, I didn't come with excellency of speech, you know, Um it's 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 foolishness to people that death burial resurrection it just can't be that simple it can't be that i but i have to go and i have to i have to do all these things from a natural standpoint in order to work out my own salvation and uh that adversary wants us to uh, not understand these things wants us to be continually working because when we're working we're not relying on yasha messiah and that's the trick of the adversary there was a time where these things were valid they were valid for the particular people, the Jews that were called out. Uh, Yahshua said he called um, his son out of Egypt. Uh, he referred to that collective people as his son. He made a promise to Abraham that he was going to have his that seed go down into a land they knew not of and be evilly entreated, but they would come out with great substance. There's a, a round trip. They started in Canaan's land. They got down to Egypt, but they came back up according to the purpose of Yahweh. Now, they didn't come back up the way they went down because it was the newborn that went back up, if we can get the Moses chart. So we have to... we. It, it seems like this is very complicated, but it's not. It's very simple. However, it must be revealed by his spirit. And when we don't have that revelation through Yahshua Messiah, we can go off on all kinds of tangents, right? And at the time that the Jews, when Yahshua Messiah was in his ministry, you had several different sects of the Jews, right? You had the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Enzymes, the Zealots. I can't think of any more right now. Uh, Pharisees, I think I said that. Uh, you had a number of them. But but after Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection, then the satanic spirit, um, at, you end up with all these different denominations. Oh, okay, you've got Christendom that started up. Then you've got um, so the, the Catholics. And then from that church, you've got a bunch of Protestants that came out of that church. And it just continues and continues because they're not satisfied with the with the preaching of the cross, the simplicity of the gospel. Yash Messiah came to die. He buried in Joseph's new tomb. He resurrected a quickening spirit to outpour the Holy Spirit on us. He came in to finish the finish. He says in, uh, what is it? Uh, is it John 19 and 30? It is finished. He wasn't talking about his life. He was talking about um, his ministry uh, and what he came in to do, which was to die for the sins of mankind so that we might be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's what the burial with John the Baptist was about. The Jews were being buried in, in death. It, it, they had to confess that they were sinners. They were basically saying they were dead spiritually and psychologically. What do you do with a dead person from a natural standpoint? You bury them. Well, the Water baptism was a type of a burial. So they were they were in the likeness of his uh, death so that they could also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So it's these things that we have to start to come to some knowledge and understanding of. That's why the children of Israel had to go through the divided waters of the River Jordan. I'm sorry, the divided waters of the um, Red Sea, because the next step in the pattern is a water principle. It's either washing of regeneration or a burial. See, the children of Israel went through on dry shod. The uh, Egyptians that pursued them got wet. They were bust asunder or they were buried, okay? So the children of Israel uh, follow the cloud. That's your spirit principle. So you could see how Yahshua Messiah fulfilled that and that he was buried in Joseph's new tomb and he resurrected the third day 
as he was preaching throughout his ministry. He said, I have to die, bury, and resurrect. I have to be evilly entreated. You know, um, he came in to, as a sacrifice for sin. Um, and through, and on Acts, the second chapter, you don't have to get it. We learn that the Holy Spirit was poured out. You see that word poured? Because the water is representing something. It's a natural type and shadow. Get um, John 7, 38. I think I quoted that. Or, uh, I said that scripture, but I misquoted it. So let's get John 7, 30, 38. Because those that believe on Yash Messiah, out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. Are we talking about physical water now? No, we're talking spiritual and psychologically. That's the cleansing. That's the cleaning up of the physical body. No, it's the cleaning up of the soul. Uh, John uh, 7, 38. 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture, have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Keep going. But this spake he of the spirit, which they believed on him should receive for the Holy Spirit, which not yet giveth, because Yahshua was not yet glorified. Right. That's good. Thank you. So those that believe on Yahshua Messiah, it's the words that are spoken. Those are what is going to clean the soul. Clean them of what? Of the erroneous concepts, theories, and opinions that we've all been subject to or buried in or immersed in traversing on this earth plane, see? And what happens is when people are not satisfied with the simplicity of this gospel or this doctrine, they go about to establish their own righteousness. And that's where you get all these denominations and you get all these translations of a Bible and everybody has an opinion, right? But we have to ask what Thus saith Yahweh, that is what's important down here. And that's what the pur purpose of the school is, to help us to understand that the natural things point to the spirit and to help us to understand the mission of Yahshua Messiah. And we do it in the true and correct names of Yahweh Elohim, which is a divine title, and Yahshua. See, because this, this, is, this is the gospel and it's the same gospel that was preached by uh, Yahshua Messiah. It's the same gospel that was preached by his disciples. And when you look in the scriptures, you can see that it's the same gospel. When you see Noah, Noah right? He had um, to preach to the people that it was going to rain. This is before the law contained in ordinances was given. This was in the first age of time, okay? Uh, the second age, I think, in a series of seven. The antediluvian age. He was preaching that it was going to rain. It had never rained before. He was talking about how there was going to be a death. See, those who did not get into that ark were going to be dead. They uh, and the and the hearts and minds of mankind they were wicked. That is a type of a that is the reality of a death. Um, and so there's your death principle. You've got your water principle with the rain. Um, the ark was closed by the uh, angel. Um, that's your spirit principle. See how you could see the death burial and resurrection. And then that ark, it ascended upon uh, atop Mount Ararat. It, there's your ascension. You've got your death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. And if Yahshua and Messiah said, they are they that testify of me, then we can see Noah, whose name means comforter, that he is a type of Yahshua Messiah. You could see that the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua Messiah was being preached in principle, even back there um, in that uh, antediluvian age. And we look at these various principles and we can see them repeating over and over and over again. And why do they do that? Let's get the um, Tabernacle of Man chart. It's because everything is going according to a pattern. That pattern was revealed to Moses atop Mount Sinai after the children of Israel left the bondage of Egypt. And Moses was commissioned to go down and declare that mighty name of Yahweh unto uh, Pharaoh and his host to let his people go from the bondage. And that physical um, release, right, from bondage is, is typifying how we as souls of men have to be released from the bondage put on us by these uh, erroneous doctrines, uh, keeping us alienated or separated from our creator. Uh, Yahshua Messiah's mission was to bring us back one. That's the unity. That's the reality of the unity. So this tabernacle 
uh, Moses was admonished, the moderator went through this already, uh, that Moses was admonished to build this tabernacle that you see here. And it is actually a type and a shadow of the one that he saw in the Mount, the intangible tabernacle or the true sanctum of sanctums, a sanctum of sanctorums, which is Yahweh Elohim, okay? And this tabernacle has a death principle in the court roundabout. Uh, after you go through the gate, you've got this altar of sin sacrifice. You've got a water principle here with this flavor. It is a twofold function of washing of regeneration or of um, uh, burial. Then you have the cup of holy anointing oil that represents spirit. The high priest could not officiate in his ministry with, in this tabernacle or begin his ministry without first being anointed. And that allowed him to go into this holy place. And in this holy place, you have principles of light, sustenance with the bread and an intercessor. And going through this second veil of this tabernacle is the most holy place where you've got a three-in-one configuration, Ark of the Covenant. And Yahweh said he would dwell between the wings of the cherubim above the mercy seat. And see, this physical tabernacle is pointing to the death, burial, resurrect into the holy place, and ascend into the most holy place of Yahshua Messiah. That's, that's the gospel. It's the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. So you have it even in this pattern because you have to watch how the high priest is operating, see, in this pattern to see how Yahshua Messiah is operating in the earth plane and why he had to do the things that he had to do and why he was the only acceptable sacrifice for sin you can't rely on Allah you can't rely on Buddha they did not they don't satisfy the um, um, what the scriptures are talking about okay um, no other sacrifice is going to do and and he proved by uh, the scriptures we often, when I first came to class, we called it like, it was like he wrote his own autobiography, he wrote his autobiography, or it was his biography, you could use it, you could run it either way. But he came and revealed himself to the various pat patriarchs and prophets. And as they wrote, they were actually writing about the coming of Yahshua Messiah. And these things, if you go back in the scriptures, they help us to identify that he is the only one. He is the true savior, the only Messiah. Um, and there's going to be a lot of false ones. Now, one of the things that Yahshua Messiah did in his ministry, he talked in parables. Can you um, get Deuteronomy 29 and 29? Because the disciples say, you know, why do you talk to these people in parables? Um, and we, we should get that also, if you don't mind. Um, I, I think it's in Matthew, the 13th chapter, you may have to jump around a little bit. But he, Yash Messiah spoke in parables and parables, you're not really coming out and explaining exactly what, you know, just saying it clearly. Let me give you an example. When Yash Messiah was in his ministry, he was um, talking about Lazarus who had died. And he says, you know, Lazarus sleepeth. Um, this is not exactly a parable, but I, I just want to use this as an example of the point I'm trying to make. And um, and he, it kind of grieved him because they didn't understand, you know, they were like, oh, if he sleepeth, he doeth well, you know. But he says, you know, Lazarus is dead. That's coming straight out and saying, you know, what you mean. But it, with the parables, he would, he would give stories or analogies. Um, and But he would explain to his disciples what he meant by those things. But to others, it wasn't given. Okay, were you able to find, at least get uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29, and then I'll, I'll look for Matthew. Deuteronomy 29 and 29, the secret things belong unto Yahweh, our Elohim, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the word words of this law. Right. And the law that it's pointing to is the law of the spirit of life, not the law contained in ordinances. That was a type and a shadow but that the reality of the thing is that we should be obeying every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. And if he dwells in us, which this tabernacle pattern is showing that you had a tabernacle here on the left, but it also says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, you don't have to get it. What know ye not that your body is a temple or a tabernacle for the Holy Spirit, which ye have of Yahweh and you're not your own. Therefore, and you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your spirit 
in your body and in your spirit, which are his. And John 4, 24 says, Yahweh is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So we've got a physical body that correlates to this um, tabernacle pattern because we are made in the image and likeness of our creator. But this is the physical body. What about the soul? The soul has to be made alive. Um, and I, I, I won't get into that, but I, it's... It's important that we understand that the natural things are pointing to the spirit. Okay, so let's get uh, Matthew 13. I see in the chat, it says Matthew 13, 11. Let's try that. Let's go to 14, maybe. Start at 11. Um, you, you might want to start, start at 10. Matthew okay. 13. All right, thank you. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever have to, for whosoever ha have to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and see, and shall not uh, perceive. Okay, that's good. We're going to jump down to 35, but just hold it for a moment. So Isaiah uh, is talking about how, you see how, Yahshua Messiah is going back to the law and the prophets and, and talking about those things that are back there. Because if you have a red letter edition of your Bible, you'll find that what uh, uh, Dr. Stanzel was just reading um, is red letter. And he says, therefore, um, what does it say? Oh, it says on 14, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, uh, which is Isaiah, which saith, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. That's Isaiah 6 and 9. You don't have to get it. But I'm just showing forth how he he went back into the law and to the testament because those are the things that testify of him. He would speak to them in, in parables, okay? That was prophesied. All right, let's jump down to, to 35, I think it is. Okay, this is uh, Matthew 13, 35. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the word, world. Right. These things have been kept secret. The book was closed. That's in Revelation. You don't have to get that. That there was a book and it was sealed. And um, no man could uh, loose these seals, save Yash, basically the lamb. And um, that's pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. John is John on the Isle of Patmos, he is looking back and he's seeing these things as well. As well. He, you know, he wept much because he, no one was able to loose the seal. They look under the earth, on the earth, above the earth. No one in heaven or in, um, on, you know, heaven or any place else was able to loose these seals. The book was sealed. We can't wrestle the secrets from Yahweh is the point I'm trying to make. We, it must be revealed by his spirit. And um, when when I was listening to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, that 17 first, not coming with wisdom of words. See, that's, and, and I've been hearing it from other vessels as well. This is not an academic exercise. I mean, we can, we can study and we can, we can learn these things naturally. So, but the tra to translate them into the spirit must, it must be revealed. And that's what the vision of the founder uh, was all about, was to reveal to us the things that be of Yahweh. And uh, then we can begin to have confidence and faith in him so that we can turn to him for the things that we, um, we want to know about Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. So um, those are the secret things. Um, let's get 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 4. So I've talked about that a little bit earlier, but uh, about Paul talking about excellence of speech. But this gospel is powerful and it's simple. One, two, three, death, burial, resurrection. It, it's, it's not complicated, but we make it complicated because we just don't want to accept the witnesses. We don't want to accept the testimony. See, and that, that's a very dangerous thing. This is 1 Corinthians 2 and 1. And I, brethren, 
when I came to you, came not with excellence your speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Elohim. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahshua Messiah and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Right. Very learned man after the flesh, but he's even sh sharing with you in his experience that those things, they, they're not, they're not important. He, he, he didn't have to come that way. This thing is so simple because it, it's the power of Yahweh onto salvation. That's what this gospel is. And um, it's just so precious. So I, I just wanted to emphasize that, that um, we can study, but uh, the secret things, they belong, to, they belong to Yahweh, and they're revealed unto us by his spirit. We can never forget that. Um, now, you know, anyway, I think I'm going to leave it alone. I'll, I'll leave it at that for right now. There's some other things on my heart and mind, but I'm going to leave it alone for right now. Um, let's, let's end on... Um, even the mystery which has been hidden from ages and generations, but now has been made manifest to his sons. Because these things are truly mysteries. And we say it all the time, but it's important that we really wrap our head around that, you know, ask Yahshua, because <laughs> he's the one that has to help us with that. I'll just end on that. Well, Colossians 1.26. Mm -hmm. Okay, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, the hope of glory, whom we, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua, the Messiah. Right. It's a mystery. It's, it's, it has to be revealed. And he is the true revealer of secrets. And while he spoke to his disciples, I'm sorry, he spoke to the multitudes in parables, he did share with his disciples what those parables meant. There's examples of that. We don't have to get it because uh, I'm just really trying to lay a foundation at this time, at this point. So, you know, I, I just wanted to go through Yahshua Messiah's mission, uh, that this tabernacle pattern is important, that we, uh, our physical body is pointing to a spiritual body, and that spiritual body has to be made alive or back one with Yash Messiah, and that is his, that is his mission, and that continues to this day, and while we're still tabernacling down here, we have an opportunity to hear. Hearing is the same, you, you, Job says, the ear tries words as the mouth tastes meat. The soul has got to eat, but it has to eat wholesome food, just like the physical body has to eat wholesome food. You can walk around eating junk food if you want to. I'm, I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I was a big McDonald's person. When I first came into class, I'd walk into McDonald's. They would call my order before I even hit the counter because <laughs> they knew I was going to order a cheeseburger. No, you know, you know, whatever the order was. Um, but you, you, as you get, as you start to understand, hey, got to take care of this physical body well got to take care of the soul and me eating cheeseburgers is not going to damn my soul to hell <laughs> and so we want to make sure that we are eating good spiritual food and asking for the discernment to to uh, eat the things that are right and asking for him to reveal those secret things onto us we're not going to wrestle these mysteries from him um, so if you got anything out of that give all the praise and honor to Yahshua messiah hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Cook. And I would like to acknowledge our visiting brethren who's here from our Michigan branch, the Dean and State Dean, Dr. Terry Welch. Thank you for joining us this evening. And our next speaker will be a pleasure to call on. Um, John, I need another speaker. Gabby or uh, Gabby. Dr. Gabrielle Mays.
Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I really enjoyed the remarks of the previous vessel. Um, it really was uplifting and edifying. Um, I really praise Joshua for that. Um, at this time, I don't have too much on my heart and mind, so I would like to yield the floor. Thank you, Dr. Mays. And for our next speaker this evening, it would be a pleasure to call on Dr. May Cohen. Dr. Cohen. Hello? Yes, we hear you. Well, this is indeed a surprise. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I really enjoyed um, what came through the previous speaker. And somebody get for me um, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, start at 1. Because what we are preaching here is the unadulterated gospel of the kingdom that came straight from heaven through the vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Henley, in the year 1931. And one thing that really, really um, piqued my curiosity when I first came to class, not only you know looking at the charts, but the fact that the boldness of the speakers, that when they would say, don't believe anything that we say, prove it unto your satisfaction. And they also said that the founder of the school would also always say, you know, make me prove it until you are satisfied. And I thought that was a really bold statement because coming up in the Baptist church and at some point, you know, leaving the Baptist church when I saw, you know, I got old, I was there for the music. Then I got old and I saw wasn't nothing to that. So then I started going to the psychic fairs and get my numerology chart done, get my, um, uh, what you call astrology chart done, you know, crystals and all that kind of stuff. But there was no satisfaction to the soul at all. I wasn't learning anything. I didn't know anything about my creator. You know, when I was in church, it was basically uh, entertainment, you know, and a, a, a place for people to relieve the stress of the week, you know, shouting and jumping up and down and all that kind of stuff. But I, I, I didn't, I, there was no satisfaction at all. You know, and then when I came in this class, you know, and I sat down in one of these seats, and they, they always would say, you know, check this thing out, you know, check it out for yourself, you know, and then, you know, they would always repeat what the founder said, make me prove it, you know, to your satisfaction. And I, I thought that was really bold. So I, I, I uh, took them up on it, you know, because uh, I came up in the Baptist church and, you know, I, uh, I had a problem with the name Jesus, you know, as far as them saying that Jesus was not the name of the savior, you know, that Yahshua the Messiah was the name of the Savior. So I, uh, the way that Yahshua set me up, and y'all know the story, I've told it before, you know, but Yahshua set me up real tough. At the time, I was working right down the street from the Moody Bible Institute. And at that time, um, they allowed the public to come in and, you know, use their libraries and stuff like that. And of course, this is before the World Wide Web and internet and everything like that. So you had all these old books. <clears throat> and... I would go there on my lunchtime because I would sit on, you know, they used to say like uh, the South side, I came in on the South side, Chicago branch. And they would say, if you can prove us wrong, we'll shut the school down and follow you. Now I didn't want nobody to follow me, but I figured I was so smart. I was smart. I could probably shut them down, you know, and prove them wrong. So I go on my lunch, every lunch period, I would go down to the Moody Bible Institute and start looking stuff up. And I, I was really just floored because everything that uh, they were teaching was in these old books, you know, and uh, the name, it was so, so uh, deep because the actual, looking up the actual name, I found that in the Catholic encyclopedia at the Moody Bible Institute, an old Catholic encyclopedia, you know, so I'm like, wow, the more and more, you know, I tried to prove them wrong, the more and more I was being reeled in because it was right there in the books. 
you know, but we never knew it. And had it not been for the divine vision and revelation of our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, you know, given to him by Yahweh himself, you know, we never would have known any of this, you know, so we're really, really blessed if, if he's allowed us to come and to remain, you know, because most of the people I came in class with, they're not in class no more. It's only three people that when I first came in class that are still in class when I came in. I'm talking about in regards to Chicago. But anyway, uh, go ahead and read um, First Corinthians. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able long because I don't have anything on my mind either, you know. But this gospel of the kingdom is just you know so precious and it's 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 a heavenly language, you know. This is nothing that mankind can speak. This is nothing that mankind can uh, come upon, you know, because it comes from Yahweh Himself, you know. And if a vessel is speaking this gospel, the kingdom, it's because uh, the, his soul has been resurrected as far as his heart and mind, as far as the Holy Spirit. See, because he's the teacher. See, we as vessels, we, we are not the teacher. It's, it's Yahweh Elohim himself, the Yahshua Messiah, that is the teacher. And as uh, it says, I think it's in John 14, 26, he's the one that brings all things back to our remembrance, whatever he has showed us. And we can only share, you know, the things that he has given us to share. You know, some of us have a whole lot, just like in the Bible. You know, you got Jeremiah and Isaiah and big books. And some of us have, you know, maybe just a little bit, but it doesn't matter. You know, just like the children of Israel, it says, according to your eating, make your account for the lamb. Some of us eat a lot. Some of us eat a little. And that's the spiritual principle, Romans 1, 19 and 20 to look at, you know, is just as valid. It's just as, you know, true. It's just as substance for our soul see because he is the teacher but go ahead <clears throat> excuse me and read um first corinthians uh 15 start at one all right this is first corinthians 15 and one moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also ye have received and where ye stand okay, By which now it says that this gospel was preached unto you and you receive it and you stand in it, just like the scripture says, when you shall see the abomination, desolation, stand in the holy place. Now, before coming up this school, I, I didn't know what that meant. None of us probably knew what it meant about standing in the holy place. We can look at our tabernacle pattern and understand what is going on in the holy place. You got constant light. You got uh, that table of shoe bread, which is constant communication. And then you got the intercessor you know, pointing up to that uh, altar of uh, uh, incense. So you got light in there 24 seven, because we know that the light uh, was, uh, it was lit at three o'clock and snuffed out at nine o'clock in the morning because the SUN in the sky gave the light during the day. So there was constant light in there, you know. Then you got your table of shoe bread where the high priest ate on that, uh, ate of that uh, shoe bread, that table of shoe bread daily. See, so you're in constant communication, you're in constant light, and then you have Yahshua Messiah that offers up those groanings and says that we don't know what to pray for as we are, but the Holy Spirit offers up those groanings cannot be uttered. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, now we understand when it says to stand, it just like it was brought, I think it was yesterday, I know it was one of our classes, where they said they wasn't sitting in there. See, they wasn't sitting in there, you standing, standing in the holy place, see? But go ahead and continue to read second verse by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what i preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain okay now it says it says if you keep in memory now i want you to hold that and read uh where it says uh john 14 20 i think it's john 14 26 about the comforter bring bringing all things back to your remembrance if somebody can read that hold where you are but go ahead and read that. See, it says that this is something that you can be saved in, you know. And it's like, well, saved from what? I ain't lost. You see what I'm saying? But we know that there are three ages in the realm of time. There are seven ages in dispensations in this set of seven or this week, this week. But it's only three ages in the realm of time. And the previous speaker talked about that a little bit, see. And we're on, at the fourth age in the series of seven, but the third or last age in the realm of time, see? 
And we're at the very last critical seconds of that. So what are we being saved from? Uh, can somebody get, I think it's in a, maybe a First Thessalonians that talks about uh, the wrath of Yahweh. That's, if, Romans. If somebody, That's hmm? Romans. That's Romans. That's Romans about the wrath of Yahweh. Oh, okay. Isn't it something in Thessalonians too? Yes. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, get both of those. Get both of those. But mm -hmm. go ahead, put Paul and read uh, about the comforter. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring See, all comforter. things. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. See, he's the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, who the Father is going to send in his name. What is his name? Yahshua. What does Yahshua mean? Yahweh is salvation. So the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, is one and the same, the comforter and the Holy Spirit. And just like the previous speaker brought out beautifully uh, that death, burial, and resurrection, talking about with Noah and the ark and how Noah's name meant comforter. He's a type of Yahshua Messiah. See, the whole book is written of him. You see what I'm saying? It's just it's just so beautiful you, when he opens up your heart and opens your mind and you're able to see it. But go ahead and continue to read there. Okay. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, see, it says that the comforter is the one that's going to bring, teach you. Not only is he going to teach you, but then he's going to bring all things back to your remembrance, whatever he has said unto you. See, so we we can't we can't uh, uh, lean on our own intellect or our, you know, our, our, you know, taking this gospel and uh, putting it on ourselves and, and uh, defining ourselves as smart because we're able to, you know, go through these, you know, parables and go through the, the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and, and preach this gospel. This is not mankind's intellect. It has nothing to do with mankind's intellect. This is the gospel of the kingdom comes straight from heaven itself through Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? Yahweh sent this seed directly. You know, it comes directly from the creator of heaven and earth. This is not our intellect. This is not uh, a definition of us being smart. This, he is the one that is the teacher, see? And he's the comforter and he's teaching us and bringing these things back to our remembrance, whatever he has showed us. So go ahead back over there because I know I asked about the, um, the wrath of Yahweh and Thessalonians and somebody said Romans 2. Hold those, but go back to uh, the gospel where you were reading there. In Corinthians. All right, this is a. Uh, you want me to start over again or continue where I left? You can. Uh, First Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless. You just heard how the only way you're able to keep it in memory is Yahshua Messiah is the one that's got to give you that, give it to you. See, he's the one that's bringing these things back to our memories. See, we can't, we have to really understand that we cannot take any credit for this at all. We can't take any credit. You know, you can't put your two cent in. You know, well, I'm putting my two cent in. What about you? You going to put your two cent in? Yeah, I'm putting my two cent in. Well, if you put one cent in, it's wrong. See, because I'm going to tell you, the gospel of the kingdom is perfect. Now, we as human beings, we are not perfect. But this gospel that came straight from heaven, that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, this gospel is perfect because the teacher and the preacher of this gospel is Yahweh Elohim himself, or the resurrected Yahshua Messiah, the one we read over there in John 14, 26, that the comforter the Holy Spirit will be in my, come in my name. See, Yahshua, Yahweh is salvation. But go ahead and continue to read there. Unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first all that which I also received, how the Yahshua, the Messiah, died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he did it. He and didn't do it. 
kind of way, you know, before I know before I came up in here, you know, they said, well, you know, Jesus died for our sins. I said, oh yeah, Jesus died for our sins. But it says here that he didn't just do it any kind of way. He did it according to the scriptures. So what we need to know, well, what are the scriptures? Somebody get Isaiah 8 and 20 and hold it, but continue to read. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, see, and he, he, did, he did it according to the scriptures. And um, I know I said Isaiah 8 and 20, but also get, uh, I think it's in Psalms. And I don't remember where the other one is, where he talks about that he come in the volume of book. Maybe it's in Hebrews. I can't remember. I'm terrible with scriptures. But I know it's one in Psalms where he come, uh, the book is written of him. See, because it says that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We can't get everything out in two hours. That's why it's so important, you know, for us to return so we can hear this gospel because it's so much, it's so much to it, and we can't get it all out in a two-hour time frame. But that's good there in Corinthians. Um, I know I got those scriptures about the. Uh, wrath of Yahweh hell. But before that, read those two scriptures uh, about him coming in the volume of the book. Hebrews 10 and 7. Then mm -hmm. said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. See, so he said he coming in the volume of the book. Let's it, it's written of him. Let's read the other one. And then after that, read Isaiah 8 and 20. This is Psalms 40. I'll start at uh, 6. Sacrifice mm -hmm. and offering thou didst not desire. My ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O oh, my Elohim, yea, thy law is within my heart. See, so he saw, he's saying all that sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. See, because we know that those were all types and shadows. If we go back to our schoolmaster and we read about all of those offerings and sacrifice, it was something innocent that had to die for the guilty. But it's all pointing up to one sacrifice, which is Yahshua Messiah, which is the only acceptable sacrifice to Yahweh. See, he is the one that came in the volume of the book. Those sacrifices that they gave up year after year, and it talks about that in Hebrews. It didn't do anything to make a man's conscious, you know, nothing in regards to the consciousness of a man, you see. But Yahshua Messiah, when he came in and he was offered up, that's acceptable sacrifice unto Yahweh himself, see, he did away with the law. That was the end, and the previous speakers talked about it, you know. The end, it wasn't like he said, well, you know, I died, it's over now. No, it's talking about everything that was written in the law and the testimony that he fulfilled and put, a, put an end to it all so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. What is that abundant life? Eternal life through the Holy Spirit. Well, go ahead and um, read uh, Isaiah 8 and 20. See, because it says that he comes in the volume of the book. Now, I used to think the volume of the book was the Bible, but that's not what that's talking about. Let's read Isaiah 8 and 20. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So we come up in here, we find out that the law is the first five books of the Bible you know, authorship of Moses. And then the testimony is the remaining 34 books of the Bible, you know, the, through the prophets of the law and the prophets of the law and the testimony. So that's the first 39 books, what they commonly call the Old Testament. But he said that if it's written, he said it was written of him. And it says here, if it speak not, it doesn't say if it speak not according to these words. It don't say that. It say if it's if they speak not according to this word. So we got to find out, well, what is the word? Somebody get a John 1 and 1. See, because these scriptures are all connected. They are, it's put together so beautifully. We don't have to try to figure it out. We don't have to put our heads together and say, come on, y'all, let's get together. 
you know, after church, let's get together and put our heads together and see if we can figure out some of these mysteries of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? We ain't got to do none of that. It's all put together for us through this gospel, this great gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. Okay. Um, what did I just ask for? Mm. John 101. Oh, yeah. Yeah, read John 1 and 1. And then after we read that, we're going to read the uh, this, uh, scripture in Romans and in Thessalonians about the, uh, the wrath of Yahweh. But go ahead. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So it says it so it says they speak not according to his word. That's what they said in Isaiah 8 and 20. Then we read here in the beginning was the word and it's singular, just like it was in Isaiah 8 and 20. If they speak not according to his word, singular. So it says in the beginning was the word, the word was with Yahweh, and that word was Yahweh. You know, and it says all things were made by him see when we think all things we not we we thinking okay yeah you know he made the earth and he made the trees and he made when it talks about all things we're talking about both angelic and physical uh both things that are invisible and things that are visible things that are known and things that are not known see he made everything see go ahead and continue to read In, uh, in John. Okay, uh, this is the fourth verse. Okay. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So he said, now it says that in him was life, and the life was a light of men. And then we read over there when Yahshua Messiah is walking around in life and sinful flesh. Doesn't he say, I am the way, the truth, and the life? We're talking about the one and the same. We're not talking about three different individuals. All we got to do is look at our tabernacle pattern. Our tabernacle pattern shows us beautifully what's going on. You see what I'm saying? The court roundabout, you got your death, you got your burial, and you got your resurrection principle there with the, uh, they pull up that uh, tabernacle um, uh, chart. You know, just like with the death, you got your uh altar of sin and sacrifices. Then you got your brazen labor there, which is your water principle, you know, and then you got that cup of anointing oil. See, that's that death, burial, resurrection principle. See, that's uh, showing you Yahshua Messiah's mission. And that's in the court roundabout because he did come in the likeness of sinful flesh. Then when you go and he said he is the door, right? See, he the one that's got to let you in. He say, I am the door. So then when you go through that door, which is principle of four or 40, you know, then you get in there, you know, now that you're dealing with the Holy Spirit, Yahweh Elohim. So you got the light in there, you're in constant light. You communicating and you know your intercessor, see. And then when Yahshua Messiah came in, didn't it say that the veil in the temple was written twain from top to bottom? It's talking about that sixth veil. And we often say that that's the veil of the flesh. So then you find out, oh, wow, check that out. See, because there's a three-in-one configuration in there. So that's letting you know, wow, it, First John 5 and 7 go right along with that one. See, First John 5 and 7, go on and read it. You know, but you got a three-in-one configuration in there. See, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. And just like what we're reading over here in John 1 and 1, it says the Word was with Yahweh and the Word was Yahweh. And then when you drop down to the 14th uh, uh, verse, it says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, that's, that's showing that, that three-in-one configuration. We can look at that uh, Ark of the Covenant and understand that that's pointing up to the unity of the Spirit. Oh, it's just beautiful. I tell you the truth. It's just so beautiful. Okay, uh, that's good there, uh, uh, Dr. Quace. Uh, read uh, 1 John 5 and 7. See, because first, that, that 1 John 5 and 7 is, is, is going right along with this tabernacle pattern. Go ahead and read it. 1 John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. For the three that bear record in heaven, the Father, mm -hmm. the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Okay, so now I see that there's a record in heaven. Okay, and it says that the Father, the Word, 
and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. So we can look in the most holy place. We look at the Ark of Covenant. That's a three in one configuration there. And you got those archangels pointing up to the two witnesses, right? You got those archangels. And it looked like they facing each other and looking at each other, but they not, they are facing each other, but they not looking at each other. They looking on what's looking at what's going on in the cloud. You see what I'm saying? And just like when we come together one to another, you know, and the Holy Spirit, you know, is dwelling in our heart and mind. We not looking at, we might be facing each other, talking to each other, whatever, but we ain't looking at each other. We ain't looking at each other for answers and looking up to each other and, you know, putting each other up on a pedestal. We not doing that. We looking at what thus said Yahweh, looking at what's going on in the cloud. Go ahead and continue to read. A first. And there are three that bear record. I'm sorry, there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay, so now when you come down to the court roundabout, it says that that record in heaven had no, has witness in the earth. And you look here on your court roundabout, it said the spirit pointing at that cup of anointing oil, the water, that brazen labor, and the blood. And it's saying these three agree in one. And then blood got four points of blood all around that uh, altar. You got the, that's picking up the black man. It's picking up the Caucasian man. It's picking up the Asian man. It's picking up the red man. See, and he is the sacrifice. Yashin Messiah, see, he is the sacrifice. He died for all mankind. Oh, man. I tell you, it's lovely. It is now. It's so lovely. Okay. Is, is uh, that all there? Yes. Okay. You know what? You can go ahead and read a uh, read another a verse of that. All right. We'll start at number nine. Um, we'll go down that. Mm -hmm. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. But this the is the witness of Yahweh. See the blood, water, spirit, the death, burial, resurrection. See the witness of Yahweh is greater. We receive the witness of men every day in everything we do we receive the witness of men see but the witness of Yahweh is greater see because the witness of Yahweh is bringing you unto eternal life or eternal glorification through the Holy Spirit okay oh man I tell you that's good there uh go ahead and get the scripture in uh Romans and, and Thessalonians okay I got Romans okay uh, I'll start at seven, Romans five and uh, seven. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I'm having these read is because when we, result, when we were reading over there about the gospel, one of the things is said, and you are saved in this gospel, you know, because we have to understand that this, uh, this realm of uh, time and space, physical time and space was never meant to continue forever. As has already been brought out, it's three ages in the realm of time, but we got three more ages to go, you know, in this particular week, three more ages to go, but they are not in the realm of time. So when it says that you're saved in this gospel, see, because, you know, this, it, it, if you look on um, the uh, pattern and plan of salvation chart, there's a little area there where this shows the lake of fire. It, I don't know if we can pull that up. It shows, uh, there it is, right to, to the bottom right. You see that? Where it says, uh, I can't see what it say there. Uh, but at the bottom of it, if you in your classroom, go and look at that chart. Because when you look at it, you're going to see the sun in there. You're going to see the moon in there. And you're going to see the stars in there. The elements burning up with fervent heat, see? And, you know... And we're being delivered from that, see, because this earth plane was never meant to last forever, see. But you got the sun in there, you got the moon in there, you got the stars in there, you know. And mankind cannot wrap his man his mind around what that actually means, because as long as the earth's been here, there's been a sun, moon, and stars, see. But go ahead and read uh, in uh, Romans and Thessalonians, and and I don't know if if. In one of those, it talks about the elements uh, melt with fervent heat. But if it's not in one of those, could somebody get that scripture? Okay, this is Romans 5, and I'll start at 6. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll start at 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, 
Yet, mm -hmm. pre-adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But mm -hmm. Yahweh commended his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, the Messiah died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. See, we're justified by his blood. See, he gave of his blood, dying on that cross. See, we're justified. What's that last part say? We're justified what? It says that we are, um, it says we we shall be saved from wrath through him, being now justified by his blood. See, we're justified by his blood. See, he died the death of an outcast dog so that we can have life and have it more abundantly, eternal life. I'm telling you, it's it's beautiful, you know, and it's 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 very humbling because you know that, you know, we it's nothing that you did. And it's nothing that you didn't do. It's only by his grace and his mercy that he has found us worthy. See, and this has been preordained all the way from the foundation of the world. Because it says in uh, Isaiah 45 that he declared the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Now, I want to see any of you guys declare the end from the beginning. Let me see you do that. See, we're talking about creator of heaven and earth. Okay. All right. Read the other one uh, in Thessalonians. I have, um, let's see, I think it's Second Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians. Where did I do that? It's seven and eight. Seven and eight. Okay. Second Thessalonians. Oh, do you have a DeAndre P? Mm -hmm. I have uh, Second Peter three. Do you have the Thessalonians one? I have Second Thessalonians um, 1, 7, and 8. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When mm -hmm. Yahshua Messiah shall be revealed from I mean, heaven. You, but it says that you who are troubled, rest with us. And it, didn't Yahshua Messiah say, take my yoke upon you and learn of me? So you are fine, because I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your soul. You see? You know, it's it's. I'm telling you, you you, we are we are at rest. At least we should be, if it be that the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in your heart and mind. You know, I know before, just like I said, you know, when I first started, you know, this discourse, you know, I was I was in the church, and when I saw that wasn't happening, you know, I got old enough, and it was more, you know, I started seeing, and you know, because I was it was the music at first, then the psychic fairs and the astrology chart, numerology chart, you know, just. You know, just going all around blindly, groping in darkness, you know, but it says you are troubled, rest with us. I'm telling you, this gospel, the kingdom, this gospel will give you rest unto your soul. I'm telling you, but go ahead and continue to read there. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be re revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, Mm -hmm. And flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. So it Who says that he's taking vengeance on them that don't know Yahweh and obey not the gospel. We just read in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 chapter what the gospel was. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Yahshua Messiah according to the scripture and that uh, Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, so whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that is Joshua, which means Yahweh is salvation, the creator of heaven and earth. Not Michael. He didn't send Michael. He didn't send Gabriel. He himself at the appointed time came in the likeness of sinful flesh as salvation or deliverance to be deliverance or salvation for mankind. Oh man, I'm telling you, that is so beautiful. I'm telling you the truth. Okay, does somebody um I don't know if it's in, in Revelation, second, but it's talking about the you, elements. You, yeah, mm -hmm. it's in it's in Second Peter third chapter. Oh, okay, I'll, thank you. I'll okay. start at the I'll start at seventh verse, okay? Yeah. I think it's like the tenth verse somewhere around there. That's fine. Okay. But the heavens and earth, which are now, 
by the same word are being kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of unholy men. See, it's being but, preserved and kept. It's it's kept and being preserved unto fire. That's why when you look at the uh, where it says Joshua second coming there, that's why when you look. And give that chart a real close look. You're going to see the elements, the sun and the moon and stars in there. Okay. Go ahead and continue to read. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That mm -hmm. one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise. That's as right. some men count slackless. Mm -hmm. But is long suffering to us were. Not willing that any should perish, but right. that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. But the day of Yahweh shall come as a thief in the night. See now, the now, if you in the day, it ain't coming uh, to you as a thief. See, because it's coming as a thief in the night. But we are of the day. See, because we have light. You know, uh, twenty four seven, we can see. See, he's opened up our eyes. He's given us the eye of understanding. Somebody get over there. Uh, I think it's in um, First Peter said uh, he has come and given us an understanding. This, I know it's in that same era, John or Peter, but somebody know where it is. But go ahead and continue to read. Okay. All right. Um, but the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night and which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, mm -hmm. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Now, uh, when you look up elements, elements means air, it means fire, it means water, and I, I forgot what the fourth one is, but that, you know, look up the word elements. It's like, what? Fire? But it says it's going to melt with fervent heat or melt with fire. But we ain't talking about no physical fire. See, we remember we got to look at natural things in order to understand spiritual things. Like we talk about a lake of fire. A lake is a containment, a lake of fire. If you read in the uh, textbook in the fourth volume that condensed explanation about hell. See, Dr. Kinley really breaks down what that burning really is. And that's that burning desire to find out that you never will have a chance to be part of that glorified body. And you're yearning and burning to be a part of it. See, that's the true burning. See, but we have to look at natural things in order to understand spiritual things. See, so you look up you look up the word elements when you get a chance. It's, it's talking about the fire, the air, the water. You know, so it says the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. Is that all there? The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. See, it's going to be burnt up. But see, we, we're thinking natural fire, like, you know, you see a fire, you know, but it's really uh, not a natural fire. See, because that's still physical. See, because it sells you elements. And one of the elements is fire. So it's not going to be, you know, a natural fire, but we we can't wrap our minds around, you know, just how, you know, magnificent this thing is. That's why we have to look at natural things and to get an idea, idea, you know, to understand spiritual, spiritual things. So um, I have elements if you want it really quickly. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Any of the four substances, air, water, fire, and earth, formally believed to compose the physical universe. See there? See there? See earth, fire, air, and water. And it says that the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Oh, man. See, we, like I said, you know, we as natural creatures, even in our you know, our deepest imagination, we still see something physical because we can't, you know, we have to glean spiritual principles from physical things because we're in a physical realm. But I'm telling you, you, <laughs> you don't want, you don't want to be on, on that side of it. You really don't want to be, you know, and it's by Yahweh's grace and mercy through his son, Yahshua Messiah, that he sent that, you know, those of us that he has preordained from before the foundation of the world to be a part of that glorified body 
and to be, you know, in him, you know, through the Holy Spirit. You know, we're we're so blessed. We are so blessed that words cannot e express how blessed we are. Do I have anything else, Hell? If I don't, I'm going to yield the floor. Um, first John 5 and 20. Oh, okay. Well, okay, read that. And we know that the son of Yahweh is come and have given oh, yeah. us the standing. Mm-hmm. Son of Yahweh has come and have given us an understanding. Mm -hmm. Has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in says, he is come and has given us an understanding. Because I know is another scripture where it talks about those that say that Yahweh is, is coming to flesh is of Yahshua, but those that say that he's not is of that anti-Messiah. So it says that he is come and he's given us an understanding. Go ahead. Given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. This is the true Yahshua and eternal life. See, this is the true Elohim and eternal life. See, we're in him that is true. And what was the other one? In him that is true. And what? The other one? That we know him that is true and we're in him that is true. Is that and what it's saying? We are in him that is true, even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. This is the true Elohim in eternal life. See, so if he's come unto you and he has given you an understanding, if you understand anything about this great, wonderful gospel of the kingdom, then consider yourself blessed, you know, and whatever he has shown you, definite for sure. Don't try to know everything. I know I've said this many times, you know, but it's important that you just hold on. I only know a few things and the few things I know, I'm just going to build on them few things. I ain't going to worry about now. If he give me, you know, more revelations or other stuff, that's fine. But there are some things that he has shown me definite and for sure. And I can speak on those things, see. And I'm, it's like a rock. And you know, it says that rock is the Messiah. So those things that he has shown you and has given you for sure, hold on to those things. Build on to those things, see, because those things are definite and for sure. You ain't shaking and quaking and like, well, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. There are some things that he has shown you and you can stand like an island. It don't matter what nobody else thinks. If everybody go to the left, you're going to stand steady in what you know. So those things that you have, that you know, definite, for sure, definite and for sure, stand firm in those things. Okay. Because that's enough. That's enough. He said, if you can have the faith of a mustard seed, have you ever looked at a mustard seed? It's so tiny. It's the smallest little thing. But see, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to have a lot. Whatever he's given you, just hold on to that. And that's what he really been showing me lately. Don't worry about trying to know everything. Don't, you know, because the other day, uh, one of the brethren went through the numbers a little bit. And I'm like, ooh, ooh. I was I was there for a minute. I got further than I have in the past. But after a while, I'm like, oh, okay, ooh, ooh. you know, I, I'm not a number person, but that's okay. It's according to your eating. Make your count for the lamb. You see what I'm saying? And, and it doesn't mean that you have any less Holy Spirit if you don't understand the numbers or it doesn't mean that. You just hold on. To whatever it is he has given you hold on to that and build on that even if you're gonna be like i am i'm a broken record y'all i just say the same thing over and over again because i can only talk about the things that i know for sure you know so if you call me on the floor you're gonna hear probably the same lecture because i can only speak on the things that i know for sure you know, and I used to used to scratch my head about that, but I'm not ashamed about that because these are the things that I know for sure. The things that he has given me, these jewels that he has given us, you see. But I'm real thankful, you know, to uh, be able to come to class every time that he allows me to come. And um, with those few words, I'm going to take my seat and I hope somebody got something out of what was said. All praise and honor go. To our Savior Yahshua. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Dr. Cohen. And for our next speaker this evening, it will be a pleasure to call on Dr. Jessica Evans. Dr. Evans. Um, going once, twice. All right, and um, for our next speaker this evening, it will be a pleasure to call on Dr. Reba Riley. Dr. Riley. Dr. Reba Riley. Oh, hi to all the speakers tonight. And I just like to say if um we see Yahshua, they would have to see it. It through we are his physical body. That he stopped ministry he, on the shores of Galilee, but that's what has not changed. He is the same has to be there forever. That's in Hebrews 13:8. Yasha still wants to teach this gospel to the people. He still wants to cast out um, any unclean spirit. And, and um, he says in the scripture that he was sick and Yasha still has the power to do this. These things say, like it says John 14, 12. So how can he get it done through us? Um, Teach this gospel, get it out, and and try to get people like I try to get my my grandchildren to understand this gospel because it's really important that they try to understand it because the world really doesn't have anything to offer them but the material things and and when I see my grandchildren with their um, iPads and telephones, they're so into it. So sometimes I have to pull them away so they can to learn more of Yahshua. That's why I want them to. And they need you, Dr. Riley, you're going in and out. You need to seek him. It has to sound. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if it's my phone. Uh, but uh, um, so I'm saying it. Your your phone is going in and out. Oh, okay. Is that because I Reba, we have to call you next time. It's 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 just going in and out a little bit too much. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. You before thank you. All right, um, we have about um, about uh, 12 minutes. So we're gonna open the floor for testimonies. If you have a short testimony, um, if you could please step up and share it with us. Anybody? Short testimony. I really enjoyed the uh, the class, the remarks of the vessels on um, that Yahshua used, encouragement of um, knowing that this teaching is not an academic exercise, but it is revealed by the Holy Spirit. And we have to rely on Yahshua Messiah and believe in him 
otherwise we will suffer the wrath of Yahweh. So um, I thought it was a um, very beautiful class. And I thought yesterday's class was, was beautiful as well. Encouragement to pay attention and ask Yahshua to not uh, be distracted by the wiles of the adversary and pay attention when the Holy Spirit is speaking and when you are in class to be there and not, you know, moving around doing this, that, and the other. But it's important that we rely on Yahshua the Messiah because we are down to the end of this present kingdom age and we are about to cross over. So we have to look to Yahshua Messiah and know that he is our only savior, our only hope. That's the only way that we can escape the wrath that is to come. And you can see it being poured out on unbelieving mankind as of right now. Mankind's heart and mind is just all evil continually and you can see that wickedness manifested on the earth plane and people falling away from uh, class and men being lovers of their own self. You, you, you can see all these things if Yahshua show you, you know, and you're not caught up in all the all the distractions that the satanic spirit is throwing at you. And he, he does throw a lot at you. So just encouragement to just continue to hold on to Yahshua Messiah and ask him to not allow you to fall prey to the wiles of the adversary because it's not long folks it's not long the laborers are few as we can see the laborers are few folks don't want to you know don't want to be and help and it's just it's just it's tiring but you know we got to hold on to Yahshua Messiah and look to him. And with that, I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We still have about uh, eight, nine minutes. Anybody else short testimony? Short testimony, anybody? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I uh, enjoyed all of the um, vessels before previous speakers, um, and it's a it's a real thing. And I understand, you know, uh, the admonishment. I was reading a uh, transcript. It's called the. Um, future existence of man and Dr. Kenley was speaking about you know people don't really think about the future too much you know um, they just expect it to to keep on going along as it is but it's not going to and um, he had the same uh scripture that may called I think it was second Peter 3 and 10 read um because right now in in the transcript he was speaking about how we have a um a immortal spirit and a physical body but we had to all experience a change like even even the undertaker he got to go to. So everybody's going to have to go through that change. And these, these physical bodies have to be, um, go through that change. And it's a, a scripture I think that I'm thinking of, but it, it speaks about the change happening and the twinkling of an eye. And he was speaking about how, yes, this, um, eternal this the spirit 
within us, eternal spirit in these physical bodies have to go through that change and a more glory, glorified body must be revealed, but it's only through Yahshua the Messiah that that change can, can take place. And it's an internal operation, almost similar to when they were building Solomon's temple. Um, you know, it was a kind of a, a silent operation and wasn't a lot of tools. You didn't hear a whole lot of tools and banging and stuff. You know, it's a like a Romans 1, 19 and 20 takes the natural to understand the spiritual things. So, and if this, if anybody got anything out of what I said, all praise goes to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua Messiah, and I'm here to the floor. Hallelujah. We still have about um, four or five minutes. Anybody else? Short testimony. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, I just wanted to say too that I uh, apologize for earlier not uh, being able to speak. It was a lot going on in the house, but um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say I enjoyed the testimonies of the uh, previous speakers. I really got a lot out of what was said, the encouragement and, and admonishment and um, talking about how the mysteries uh, that has been revealed from uh, heaven, you know, and for us to be able to have an understanding of Yahweh's purpose, pattern, and plan is truly the best gift ever that anyone could be given to because he allowed us to see and understand all the mysteries that's locked up that came out of the Bible from the law and the prophets and the, uh, and the fulfillment written of Yahshua and Yahweh Elohim. And um, it's just a beautiful thing as the previous vessels were saying. And um, we just should be ever just so grateful and thankful to Noah because there's a lot of people out here that's searching and looking for the truth. And, you know, and they don't have it. And uh, he has given us a revelation of how he is and how he's operating in his present kingdom age. And I know I only got about a second to go. And I'm just going to read uh, this John, the first chapter 5 and 20 again. And we know that the son of Yahweh is come and hath given us an understanding that we might know him. That is true and we are in him, that is true. Even the son, Yahshua Messiah, that is the true Elohim and eternal life. And it says, little children, keep yourself from idols. Hallelujah. So just encouragement and um, thank all the vessels that came forth and praise Yahshua for revealing to us the mysteries of Yahweh Elohim. And with that, I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, maybe one quick more or got about two minutes. Going once. Going twice. Three times. Um, if not, then I guess I'll I'll, I'll I'll read something real quick. It's a quote out of a letter that Dr. Kenley wrote to Don Dorner. And this is just this is a reminder for myself and anybody else who needs this. He says, "As you have learned, Don, we recognize that tolerance." and patience worketh unto salvation. And as long as the physical manifestation of God remains, Yahweh, the vexations 
and buffeting of our souls by the forces of the anti-Messiah must be endured with long suffering. We are also encouraged by the scriptures in recalling the experiences of the patriarchs and prophets as reviewed by the Apostle Paul, Hebrew, the 11th chapter, how that by faith Abraham offered up Isaac, etc. And all were tried by Yahweh Elohim, operating oftentimes through the negative forces that those patriarchs and prophets were to be found were to be found worthy to be counted among the sons of Yahweh. Oftentimes we are led to wonder about the daily joss and tittles of our physical existence, as if watching the high frequency vibrations, looking for a spiritual significance. While it's far better to take the obviously lower, slower vibrations and know how that Elohim continues to operate his law through the dispensations and ages, knowing that we are created in his likeness and image of Elohim, and knowing still better, as he said in his law, ye are El's, as El suffered himself to be made manifest in the flesh and endured the vicissitudes of the uncircumcised who worked iniquity. Likewise, we are making that same trek, whether consciously or unconsciously. So I hope that was um, of some value. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This will conclude class for this evening. I would like to thank all the vessels that came forward and spoke today. And I just have a couple of announcements. Oh, and I, I would also like to thank our visiting brethren from our uh, Michigan branch, State Dean and Dean Terry Welch. Thank you for joining us this evening. And we meet here publicly at the Best Western Hillside Hotel, located at 4400 Frontage Road in Hillside, Illinois. We meet on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. We meet Monday and two Thursday nights on Zoom and YouTube from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. These are all Central Standard Time. And we meet twice a month on Thursdays. And we meet twice a month on Thursdays in person from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. The, day we meet, the days we meet in person, it will be announced on a month-to-month -month basis. The next Thursday in, person, Thursday in person class will be this Thursday, February 23rd. Children classes will be held on Sunday, March 12th and Sunday, March 26th from 1045 to 1130 a.m. Also, there is choir rehearsal Sunday, March 12th and March 26th at 2.30 p.m. Now, may we all rise to be dismissed by Dr. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So the only rise you know, our Savior through Yahshua the Messiah, our Father, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.